Hello and welcome to a new podcast, a new podcast, it's a new podcast. If you hadn't guessed yet, it's a new podcast because you probably already knew that because you clicked on it and it had it in the title. Sir, ma'am, and any genetically engineered life forms that happen to be wandering by, there appears to be a new podcast in the download tubes. Welcome to the show. Here are a few highlights of what to expect in this behemoth of an episode. Johnny invents an oral recycler. I've got a plant right next to me in my office in the hope that the rubbish that comes out of my mouth (laughs) will get recycled back into usable oxygen at some point. Robert looks at himself in the mirror. I think great face for radio. That's why we're here. Johnny sails dangerously close to copyright infringement. We all live in a nuclear (laughs) submarine. submarine. (laughs) Patreons, you know who you are, and thank you so much for supporting us and what we do. Without you, well, our channels would be shut down and we would be without a voice or visuals. If you would like to support us, please see the show notes for the Patreon links. Now, let's get on with this big, fat, sweaty, very large episode. podcast that's brilliant that is we've got to use that every week that's the, I, I fear that's the sting. <laughs> you we could do a more urban one at a later we could, point we could do one with some uh, do you know what i was going to say which is going to so, so reveal my age with some scratching you know with a record <laughs> where you spin it one way or the other yeah because i was wet, trying wet, to be modern wet, wet, i wasn't well, going to suggest a loot <laughs> i think we should we should do different genres of music Every other week. If the truth be known, we're recording this on the day of the Shanghai yeah. Motor Show, the press day, yes. where lots of Chinese manufacturers and other manufacturers are declaring their finest products. Uh, an awful lot of I EVs. Mean, a, a, it's a fascinating sign of changing times in that, uh, you know, you all know this better than me, but so this is actually a question. But say 10 years ago, I don't know if the Shanghai Motor Show was running then. Presumably it was. It was, but it was it was a fledgling affair. Yeah, um, but 10 years ago, it wouldn't have been very big news, whereas now, pretty much all the, all the world's journalists and automotive industry watchers are looking at Shanghai to see what's coming in terms of specifically electric vehicles, because that's where people make electric vehicles. <laughs> you know, it's, ab- ab- Absolutely. I mean, you've got... Um, if you you only need it, th- th- this one is every other year, so it it, it swaps with oh, Beijing. Right. And, right um, okay. If you compare the the rise in the popularity of these shows compared to say Detroit, which is yeah. declining, um, to the and point is it, where so it yeah, is, it's getting that's getting smaller. L- right. Lots of people uh, manufacturers don't trade at Detroit Motor Show anymore, which I think is a real shame. Um, yeah. Being, and presumably, like twenty-five years ago, Detroit would have been the motor show in the world, wouldn't it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Epicenter of car manufacturing. Well, when I started as a motoring journalist, which was twenty-one years ago, it was the absolute epicenter. That and Geneva, right. they were the two right, unmissable yeah. shows. A lot of people now d- they don't even go out to Detroit, which is right. heart- heartbreaking, really, for me. Yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, the Chinese powerhouses and the west coast of America—that's where all the, the main shows are, really. Oh, New, right. well, New York New York Motor Show is on next week. So in the next podcast, right. we'll probably be talking about New York. Uh, New, New, New York. New York. New York. <laughs> Have you got your cup of Joe, I say? <laughs> that makes me slightly worried about Joe and what Joe's been doing. Well, that's what they say in New York, isn't it, about coffee? I don't know. Yeah. Just going I've by just what now I've got read. To, I've now got to reach over. For some reason, I brought my water bottle into my office so that I wouldn't get thirsty. And it's beyond the the reach of my headphones, so I'm going to go off offline for oh, a very very short time. You must reach for. <laughs> Why did I put it? Reach for your thirst quench. There we go. It's in it's in an unused, completely unused part of the, my desk. But it is. I am using a. It's a uh, renewable bottle, Robert. 
It is a renewable, it's a non-plastic beach uh, uh, water drinker. Oh, it's hot or cold. It's a little thermos, in fact. So I've got chilled that, water. Nice. Is that a spun aluminum affair, do we think? I would say it's a spun alu- aluminum. It's, they do a lot of non-plastic beach, really good. They're a lovely guy, Gareth Dean, runs the company. And we, I think I mentioned it on one of the news ones. And they do things like ear uh, spikers. What are they called? The earbuds. Oh, the earbuds. Yeah. But I, they're not plastic. They're made of wood. Bamboo, I've seen them do bamboo toothbrushes. And I, I used a bamboo toothbrush last night because I just suddenly yeah. found I went, oh, my God, it's all my non-plastic beach stuff. And I had to go, and it's something about it. It was better. It was nicer than, yeah. a, than a plastic one. They so do. Weird, they, they do some awesome um, little uh, beaker covers and stuff to replace cling film. Yeah, yeah. I'm, and also I'm, the I'm, one I'm, I'm enjoying the, their product. Reveals. Yeah, no, they're good. The one I didn't get, and I went, well, why, why, why bother with that? Which was a little glass jar with tooth floss in it, and I went, well, that's a bit weird. A little glass bottle, tiny oh, okay. little glass bottle. It's got tooth floss in it. You can get replacement floss. There's no plastic involved. The floss is wound around a wooden stick, and the, gla- the bottle is reusable and glass. It's got a little silver top with a cutter on it, so you pull your, th- your floss out. Because you've got a floss. I mean, I don't know how many of well, my listeners I, I mean, I probably floss bar, about far, far, every quarter. I probably floss. <laughs> it's, it's, I, sh- I know you're supposed to do it on a weekly basis, but the truth be oh, known... Oh, I do it. You see, I'm, I'm an obsessive. I, I do it. On a, I'm a, a daily... Ba- a day, and an interdental brushes thing. But I'm old, you know, and I've still got, I'm quite proud of my old dents. They're all a bit grey and battered, but they're all my own teeth. At good. My age, you know. That, no, that is good. That is good. You don't. Obviously, you, you're talking about y- your mouth, not the dance known as the floss. No. Because <laughs> I, I can imagine you doing that every day in the privacy of your own home. Um, but it's just one of those dances, you know. It's no just, one will remember yeah. it in two years. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think I've ever even privately done the floss dance. I, I, I did. I tried. It's, it's harder than it looks. Actually, <laughs> it's a lot harder. Um. <laughs> Well, uh, can we? But let's do. Let's. We could talk about some motor motor vehicles. Yeah. I thought, well, the one. I, let me just quickly start because I, there was a story about the, the. I don't want to go on about it too much because I've just talked about it on the on a little news update on fully charged. But the the rear wheel drive Model Three available in Europe and Asia, that it is it is clearly coming. There's been now lots of shots of right hand drive Teslas. I'm very excited about it coming to the UK. Brilliant. But there was the funny thing about. I just think it was so funny. The they have been uh, delivering $35,000 Tesla Model 3s to customers in America. Wow. But actually, they're, they're the $49,000 ones with things turned off. <laughs> oh. So, so you know, like it's, got the, it's exactly the same as one that cost $49,000, down to the last bolt. What, nut, it, so last it's, it's, you mean it's all software? It's all software, so it's it's got range limitation done by software. It's got heated seats that don't heat, but they've got the heaters. But they've in got them. the elements. In it. So does, yeah. does that mean the smart money is buying one of those, and then in well, about then, three years' yeah. time, when you can work out a cheat how code, to do it, you get an upgrade, or you whatever. can yeah. suddenly Just, hack into it and make the seats warm up. Or, yeah, this is brilliant. I have no idea. Yeah, no, and no streaming Spotify. Uh, you know, it's got a lot of restrictions on it, but it's a, essential. I mean, this is a, a report, in, and I, I'm a very sorry because I can't remember it because I haven't got it in front of me. I think it was Electrek report. I have to it. say, I would really rather fancy. I know it goes against a lot of the, the people who are real Tesla fan fanboys, as they call them. I would really love a completely bare bones, you like Dacia version of a Model Three. Yeah. A rear-wheel drive Model Three with with grey plastic bumpers. Yeah, like and no, super and no, wo- no sat nav, no nothing. Yeah, really wo- basic. Woven yeah. woven nan's hair and wool interior, <laughs> real itchy. You know, yeah, like yeah. no no big screen, just no. a, just a USB. Really simple, but and, uh, ugly as sin. I wouldn't mind what it looked like if it has yeah, similar I put range. It on, I put it on light lightweight, cheap wheels. Yeah, smaller, cheap wheels. Yeah, I'd love that—a proper kind of t- Tesco Basics. Yeah. Um, well, like, I tell you what—the one, the car I've never driven or been in, but I just like the idea of it was the Fiat Panda. Fiat Panda's brilliant. Yeah, you know, I've, ne- I've never never been in one of them. Well, but, the, you know, just to see them, I mean, it looked like basic. I mean, you know, the the very early versions, it was really a ba- it was just a metal box with four wheels on it. It wasn't trying to do anything else. It looked like it would be comfortable. You could see yeah. it would have good visibility. 
I don't know anything about the car, what it was like. I can car, tell but, you, know. you it was one of the... It had a huge production run, uh, lifespan. It was designed by right. Giugiaro. It was one of his master stroke cars. And the early models were, had an asymmetric front grille, which put a lot of people off. Ooh. So they eventually, the later ones, made them a more right. conventional grille. If you can find an early one with the offset front grille... Oh, right. Suits you, Ooh. and it, it's it's one of the few mod cars of its time that had a completely flat win windscreen. Yes, I do. That's like what a, I remember. Like a Beetle, yes. well, like or like a Land Rover, or like a Land like Rover, a, like a Defender. Yeah, yeah. so uh, quite cheap to buy windscreens for. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway, yeah, well, just, we've gone off yes, track cheap, a little. All, yeah, no, but all what we're saying is um, there would be a market. We both firmly believe for the cheapest electric car that people could make. Yes. That has yes. none of the flashy stuff. And when they unveil it at Geneva, everyone goes, you're kidding. <laughs> you know, in a way, you want a car. In a way, like the Prius. Not that we're going to talk about that a lot. But, you know, the Prius was universally condemned. Absolutely. By every mo or motoring journalist in the world. And then and, and went on to sell literally millions, they've sold now. You know, and it's kind of proved itself. And then to have a car that people go... You know, that like motoring journalists that like a Lamborghini or something just go, well, that's just a box. Why, why would I even bother with that? You know, it's yeah. awful. It's ugly. Funny that's enough, actually, what you want. you've reminded me with the panda chat to, um, I, need oh, yeah. to I need to put my hand in the air and apologise to, to viewers, li re listeners. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> o on the Geneva Motor Show report uh, video that we did for Fully Charged, yeah. I actually never got around to doing a piece on Fiat's Centoventi concept which was oh. like a next generation version of what a utilitarian e panda could look like oh oh that's and it was a really, I mean, it was it was, it was there cool. it was on display it was on display and it was uh, it was one of the cars that was um, celebrating Fiat's 120th birthday right uh, and it was called uh, yeah the the the, the Centoventi which is 120 in italian yeah um and it the great thing about this car was that it took the idea of the original Panda of being quite bare bones, right? Um, cheap bumpers front and back. It was stylish, but but really quite Spartan. Cheap, yeah. And um, we're really hoping that this will come to fruition as yeah. maybe an electric only pan Panda right. equivalent. Um, it, and it, it and it's great because uh, the cars are potentially only going to be available in one color, and you can right. you can change. Uh, Roof, you can change the wheel trims. There's not a lot going on with it, right? Um, right, but it's cool. It's basic, yeah. but it's it's stylish. A bit like a Citroen Cactus, you know the Citroen. That's C4 right. Yeah, Cactus. there are. So there's there's generally a car like that on the market, isn't there? Sort of super cheap, super straightforward. Super cheap, but has has a has something about bit it. Of has a bit of character. Yeah, yeah. That's what we want. And, and a little that, bit and, of character. And that 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 is the a one one car I missed at Geneva, which are, are, has upset a few people, and including myself. Right. I, I hit myself <laughs> with the salmon continuously uh, as punishment. You can't afterwards. you can't see them. All. I'm just doing a little bit of microphone adjustment, so I'm just apologising for the slight because I've got a brilliant system here, but it's not quite working. Because I'm there. We You've go. Got a system that, that might, isn't I'm working. More comfortable. Yeah. <laughs> Most of my systems don't work. <laughs> <laughs> but we don't need to go into my medical history right now. But no, t tell me about Shanghai, what you've seen. Because that, uh, the Audi, that's the, you just sent me that link. That does look. <sighs> yeah. The well, it's not quite what we were talking about, but it does look kind of simple, small, and not like a great big three ton SUV. So that really appeals to me straight yeah, away. Yeah, the, nice the Audi AI, um, AI me. I me AI me. It's an AI autonomous me. city car. I'm, I suppose. Yeah, I don't know. Um, the, oh, so is it, it's meant to be autonomous? Oh, right. Apparently okay. so. So well, the, no, I'm the, not, uh, the AI me has just been unveiled today at the Shanghai Motor right. Show, um, and it's uh, it's a city car that would sit below the Audi A1, which is currently the smallest, cheapest Audi. Right. Right. Um, and it's mm. like a squat little runabout thing, um, which I like. It, there's hints of Audi A2 about it. Yeah. Do you remember the old Lost Leader A2, the all aluminium small A2, oh, yes. which was a proper yeah. hypermiler um, pe right. petrol or diesel car, but it really, really right. light, um, great piece of packaging, a future classic for sure. Um, yeah. Oh, they, they pronounce it, yeah, Amy. So Amy. AI. Okay. Uh, Amy. Colon me. But it's, yeah, so it's level four autonomous, which means it, because this is my, I think this is, 
you know, I've only talked to three people about this in the industry. But when I heard that notion that, well, I can't now, I can't remember who it was, but he said, you know, what we're trying to develop is an is an auto, fully autonomous car that will never drive itself when there's people inside it. And you kind of go, well, what's the point? Well, then you go, oh, how does car sharing work? Right. It- how how would it work really well? Is that you come out of a place, not necessarily your house, a restaurant, a office you've been in, a factory, wherever you've been, and you press your button and, and it, the car pulls hail up. It. You're hailing. You it. hail it. You hail it. It pulls up right next to you. You get in it, and yeah. you, then you drive it. And while you drive it, all the insurance nightmares of how do you insure a thing? How do you make how, the car's got to make a choice between the small child running across the road and the and the old man in the car, or you know whatever it is. Yeah. No, it doesn't make that choice when there's no one in it. If it's faced with an impossible situation where it cannot miss a human being or hurt, it just drives into a wall. <laughs> or even even literally blows the wheels off so it just lands on its belly and just... And and sl- yeah, so that it doesn't hit anyone. I mean, you've got far more opportunities for a car with no one in it to not be well, dangerous. It, like you say, it is a sacrificial ve- vehicle. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. I could... Yeah. I, could, I mean, I, I quite could like the idea of... <laughs> I like the idea of a fully autonomous car that if it's faced with a situation like you're waiting for it to come along the road, it's doing 45 miles an hour in a 50 mile an hour zone, super safe. You literally jump out at the last second and the car blows itself up. <laughs> it just, I like to say it you. just shats its own wheels off and then just skids I like along the road. It just shats its wheels off, has massive hooks that fly at the back, tear the road up and it stops at <laughs> two metres. Just drags its tummy <laughs> along the ground in a sorry way. Well, this... Yeah. This thing is quite neat in in that way that Audis are. It's 4.3 metres long, so it's pretty compact. Four-seater. Yeah. It's got this bench seat at the back with like a wraparound, with wraparound sides. It's got plants yeah. growing out of the ceiling. Yeah, the plants. Which is, yeah. you know, yeah, a little bit concepty. But apparently yeah. it's to help reconnect city dwellers with nature and purify oh. the, the, air, the air that they breathe. Oh, well, yeah. yeah. That's, well, that's well, always a good thing. I've got a plant right next to me in my office in the hope that the rubbish that comes out of my mouth... <laughs> We'll get recycled back into, into usable oxygen at some point. The absolute <laughs> bobbins. So yeah, 125 kilowatt electric motor on the rear axle, so rear wheel drive. No rear wheel no, drive. I love that. No word of Quattro, but I'm sure there will be. Um, yeah. yeah, 168 horsepower, 65 kilowatt hour uh, lithium backed pack, um, and says Audi. Uh, it can, yeah. it, it'll be able to travel um, for hours at um, urban speeds between 12 yeah. and 44 miles an hour. Yeah, which makes well, a lot of sense. Well, there you go, Audi. It's good. It'd be, like you say, it's sort of uh, a lower-ranking BMW i3 with extra autonomy thrown in. It's a size yeah. which is appeals to me more than yeah. the current e-tron, shall we say. Yes, yes. So bring, bring it on, Audi, because you, yeah, you yeah. can do great interiors. We all know that. Yeah. Hurrah for Audi. Yeah, very good. I've just been scrolling down. I've just seen the Infinity Electric Sports Saloon. Yeah, yeah. Very, very nice looking thing, actually. It's kind of weird, isn't it? But I do yeah. quite like it. I mean, that's, that's clearly a big, chunky car. It's not a small car, but it's kind of... I quite, I'm quite intrigued by the front end of it, simply because it's it's big. It's very big, <laughs> and, it, a, and it holds... A, I think Infinity, the brand, holds... It does hold... Um, um, uh, provenance in America and in right. Japan and, may, and probably in China. They have just announced that Infinity, I think, are disappearing from the UK. But the, the right. thing is, is that nobody knew they were really here. No, so because I had to one, one time. In fact, when I interviewed their ex CEO Carlos Ghosn oh gosh, I yeah. had to meet meet him at the in the Infinity showroom in. In the middle of London, and I went. Well, where the hell's that? I didn't know. And it was there was one in on Piccadilly, you know. So I've got a flagship showroom. Oh. I'd, I'd, and I'd cycled past it and caught the bus past it forty times in the previous couple of years and never noticed it. So they didn't make a big impact here, did they? But you do no, see them. You do see Infinities in the states. In the That's states, true. they're quite popular. It's just over here they've been hosing money. Uh, trying to build the right. brand, and, and and they've not really succeeded. No. Certainly not in the way that Lexus did. Yeah. So or does because Lexus isn't dead, but no. Yeah. But yeah. So we should explain for the non-car aficionados, of which I hope there's many. Infinity. Uh, to us. In, well, Infinity is, sort of, is Nissan's luxury brand. Yeah. In the same way that the luxury Toyota brand is Lexus. Yeah. 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 The uh, 
um actually um talking of toyota there is a toyota at the shanghai motor Show, yeah which is fully electric fully electric which Hello. looks like we might not be getting it over here but no. damn it it's brilliant and yeah, um, it looks really good it's upsetting because i i know what it is and this interests me uh, because the Toyota IQ is no longer um, is no longer on sale. They're little sort of smart car equivalent, which could fit more than two people in. Right. Well, they've agreed to sell the rights to to the electric powered version of that car called the EQ, which sounds suspiciously like Mercedes might sue them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, to a Chinese electrical vehicle startup company called Singulato. I think that's how you say it. Which wow. sounds like. A posh Italian dessert, right? Yeah. Singulato, which will market it as, as something called the IC3, and in return, Toyota will have the rights to buy Singulato's green car credits under China's new quota system for electrified oh. cars. Now, <sighs> this is happening a lot now, where brands yeah. are jumping into bed with one another just to buy their their carbon do gooding. Yeah, because right? um, some yes they have, and someone's done it with Tesla, haven't they? Someone's or yeah. they, that it's in the works that deal, but I can't remember which company. They, they're basically buying Tesla's carbon credits, yeah, you're, so they can carry yeah. on selling diesel. You're, you're buying their books almost, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's be, weird. Yeah, it is. So this sing, single auto um, IC3 Urban Dream Chaser. What a lovely full <laughs> title that is. <laughs> that's basically that's what I call myself at the weekends. The urban dream chaser, yeah, will be available to Europeans. Or it will be the electric, oh, right. okay. the electric city car. Um, yeah, based on the Toyota IQ, the two firms have signed a deal to license the design, giving the Chinese car startup a base for its first model and the Japanese giant experience of the Chinese EV market. It will also mm-hmm. let Toyota buy these green car credits in the future, which could have a big impact on its plans for China. Mm. Production is earmarked for the end of twenty twenty with a bespoke powertrain along existing IQ parts, including the chassis, the brakes, the steering suspension. It means the IQ will live on, which I'm glad about, because it is yeah, yeah. a bloody cool car, actually. I, it's a, that, I have driven that, and it was a great little car. It was so, that, well, it was a bit like the Smart in that sense, where you see it and you go, I don't think I can even get in that. No. It's just so tiny and short. And then you get in it and you go, this is like a really big, it's like oh. getting in a great big luxury saloon car. It's a really. masterclass in packaging. Yeah. No, brilliant. And... Yeah. um. There's, there's going to be some minor design tweaks with uh, infotainment. The motors and batteries are being designed by Singulato. An NEDC range of around 186 miles is predicted. That's what, right. well, uh, that's according great. to uh, Reuters. That's where right. I've got that from. But yeah, it, 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 well, if, you, if anyone out there ever owned an Aston Martin Signet, which was a Toyota IQ rebadged and restyled, and Aston, oh, that's right. Aston yes. bought that car... Yeah. Because they didn't want to get um, into trouble with the government for making big polluting cars, so big this is like this. Cars. This wow. is the second iteration of the the Toyota IQ being involved in com- right. companies. Other, com- other companies. Yeah, yeah, it's a cool car though. I'm looking yeah. forward to that. I don't know whether we'll get it in the UK, but Singulato IC3, come come, come and have a go if you think yeah. you're hard enough. You know. Yeah. Or, or, urban, what was it called? Urban. I quite like it's the Urban, the urban just, Dream Chaser. The IC3 I'm just going to. Urban Dream Darling, I'm popping down to the shops of the Urban Dream Chaser. Do you need anything? <laughs> <laughs> but don't uh, worry, I'm not going to IKEA because I, I could get some night lights. <laughs> you have to get in IKEA. Um, uh, oh, I didn't. I you know, I, I, my, I didn't. I, sorry, I didn't know this, but Toyota oh, sold about 100. Um, electric IQ cars in 2012 and then discontinued it quickly yeah. due to concerns over its the limit of EVs and including That's their so, high price tag and yeah but I mean that was range. one of the very first electric cars I drove was the Toyota RAV E4 yes which is and that same car and this is why this is the whole thing that I didn't I'd forgotten about it it was a long time ago Paul Scott a lovely man in Santa Monica in California and he, uh, the thing I always remember is as his house was up on a hill above the coast, so yeah. it was really near the sea. You could see the sea from his back garden, I think. Um, and it went down the hill, the, the road, and uh, and he said, well, "Just pump the brakes." As we went down the hill, and I went, "All right." And I was driving it, and so I went, <laughs> and you did hear a bit of a, <laughs> a, you know, grating noise because that's the biggest problem he's had with it is that the brake because it's salty air. 
the brake just oh, rusts up corrosion. really quickly. Yeah, because he doesn't use the brakes. And it was all those things. But that's where I kind of learned. Oh, I see. You don't use the brakes as much because the car slows you down. Regenerative braking. This is this was got to be two thousand two. He's still wow. got it. It Has still it? works. It's never gone wrong. He's still it's got still it. Still running. He uses it every day. Yeah. Can you go? You need to drive it again. I know. Well, you when sh- we're in California later this year, we'll have to drop in and see him because he's a solar. He's a solar dude. He does solar stuff. I don't know. He puts solar on roofs. I don't even know. Oh, he's a I solar think he's retired. He's, he's a solar dude. He's is he an, an urban, urban dream solar chaser? Dude. He's a, he is an urban solar dream chaser. <laughs> But yeah, no, I mean, he's had that cut. But that, in, in a sense, that story tells you the problem of, of this technology is that it lasts too long, really. It, you know, I don't know whether he's had batteries change or anything. In I mean, terms of lack, lack know, of moving uh, parts, meaning less to go wrong, meaning just, there's just less to go wrong. Yeah. can live longer. I suppose that the, what you'll find with EVs is people will trade up because of the, the chase for a bigger range yeah. for less cash. Yeah. And, and faster recharge time. Yes, those two things are it's going to be the big drivers. Th- th- those there. will be the thing. What will be great is more um, cottage industries setting up to retrofit better yeah. tech. You know, because I'd love to buy a second-hand BMW i3 for twelve grand right now. Yeah, and know that in the next eighteen months I could take it to an person, and that person yeah. will go. Do you want Johnny? Do you want two hundred and fifty mile range in that i3? Yeah, and I go. Yeah, yeah and, I really do. And- and 350 kilowatt charging, yeah. which reminds me, I've just heard from Fastned, uh, lovely Fastned, uh, they've just installed, the, it, it's not officially open yet, but it, people are using it, it's open, is their Sunderland charging station. Is it? The first, first Fastned in the country, and it has a 350 kilowatt charger. Three, 350? Yeah. Sorry, my phone just... Is that your 350 phone, kilowatt alarm going That off. was my alarm to tell me to <laughs> have a drink and go to the toilet and check, <laughs> check, check to see if Robert Llewellyn has phoned you. Um, it's a bit embarrassing. Never mind. It's happened now. Uh, <laughs> uh, but yeah, I didn't realise they were doing that because what we saw, the ones we saw in the Netherlands were one, what, 150, weren't they? Uh, the ones at the fast yeah. we saw. Yeah, they were, yeah. yeah. That's and right, because I, 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 I were used, charging uh, the jag, weren't you? Yeah, and I used a tritium, uh, I can't remember the company, you know, whatever they are, a 150 kilowatt charger in Sweden, which did do the fastest. So it, it never got to 150, but it got to 142 in the Tesla Model 3. Wow. And 100, 142 kilowatts is charging the car at, it, it's like 5,000, no, it isn't. It was, it was the most ridiculous thing. It was like 5,000 kilometers an hour, if you could... If you had a battery that could take that much, basically, it's going to charge it really quick. That's what it's telling you. <laughs> I mean, that's the, here actually, comes that's the science. The one, yeah, here comes now. Here, ladies and gentlemen, please listen carefully. This is some hardcore science. But the best way of describing it, and I tried this the other day on a someone who's never knows nothing about electric cars, but they said they did understand it. Three pin plug, five miles an hour. Yeah. Uh, seven kilowatt charger, which you can put in any house. You don't need any special three phase or anything. Is thirty miles an hour. Yeah, uh, public charger that's twenty two kilowatts, which you could would use the same wire in, is about fifty miles an hour. Rapid charger is about two hundred miles an hour uh, that we have now, fifty kilowatts. Tesla is about four hundred miles an hour, and all these miles an hours are miles of range per hour of charge. Oh, okay, miles so of so, range so per clear. hour of yeah. charge. Okay, and the then rate a three hundred a three hundred and fifty kilowatt charger is. It's over it's basically a thousand, thrust it's over SSC, a thousand miles an hour. It? Yeah, yeah. It's so if you if you had a battery hand. that was big enough, it would give you a thousand over a thousand miles range in one hour, which means it will give you two hundred and fifty miles range in quarter of an hour. Crumbs. 15 minutes. Yeah, but the thing is, it never does that because then you have to go into the explanation. Because even the if you went if you arrived in your Taycan at the three hundred fifty kilowatt charger, literally with it coughing its last electron into the electric motor so it was yeah. as empty as you dared get it you plugged it in it might take 350 kilowatts for the first five ten minutes and then it would start to taper off you because know. So it's it not because it it's just pumping it in so quick it's pumping it in so fast and as the batteries fill it reduces the pressure on them although don't you remember we did see uh when we were at the fast ned um offices yeah they said they noticed they they noticed that a 
prototype Taycan was charging at one of their charges because it was consistently taking 150 kilowatts for way longer than any other card. You remember they had yes, a graph. Yeah, yeah, so, they did, so which, is, which raised their something. suspicions, didn't it? Yeah, that's what caught their eye. Yeah. Well, talking of Taycan or ta- yeah. or Taycan as they sorry, I've they done call it wrong. Taycan. I'm sorry. Taycan. Taycan. Yeah. Nothing, yeah, nothing to do with Liam Neeson. No, uh, it's old joke already. At Shanghai now, the Aston Martin Rapide, which Aston is their Taycan rival, 800 volt yeah. rival, um, yeah. has just been unveiled in its finished form, and uh, looks great. It's the, so it's that it's the four door Aston Martin, yeah, um, the, the revamped version of which is uh, electric, hence right. the Rapide E, and it's got um, over 600 horsepower. It's going to be made in in Wales and some, in their new um, Aston facility in St. Athen. 155 cars are going to be made. Um, there's some visual differences. The front grille is slightly different to um, to aid cooling and aerodynamics uh, for an EV powertrain, but uh, it looks really very cool indeed. Um, 8% improvement of aero over the old petrol-powered car. It looks Aston. It looks very Aston. Right. And it's got um, yeah, it's got, it hasn't got a V12. It's got 800 volt power um, battery pack in a carbon fiber Kevlar case, uh, two rear mounted electric motors, combined output of 602 horse, 701 right. pounds feet of torque, and um, <laughs> sub four seconds to 60 in that, 50 to 70 that's, in 1.5, top speed of That's quite quick. As that's the one I think is the interesting one, because that is something I've, you know, you when you experience that in an electric car, I think that's more impressive than the 0 to 60. It's the what the is fifty it, to seventy. The fifty to seventy is yeah. is the thing because even my my I always call it the Vickers test. I really shouldn't, but if I'm on the motorway and I'm behind a truck and it's fifty, and I you mash you know, it, I mash it. It goes. It doesn't half go. Yeah, I bet <laughs> that it still does. surprises me. Four years later, I go, oh my god, I forget it does that. You got to be. But the one that I tell you, the thing that surprised me about this because clearly this is such an exclusive car, and they only make it what 155. They're making 155. It. Yeah. Yeah. Range of but just it's got over a it's got a si- sixty five kilowatt hour battery, which is way smaller than I would have thought. Yeah, in it, a way for it, that car, you know, you think the the, the smallest, what's the lowest uh, battery? I mean, that's the same as the uh, E Nero and the. It is. Uh, it's the same as the it? Kona and the E Nero. Yeah. yeah, but in a car that's got uh, six hundred horsepower, and, uh, yeah. So they've gone high on the volts and they've gone high on the horsepower. So it can charge faster then, I, I would imagine. Then, yeah, yeah. it can charge. Um, Does it actually say? I'm not been trying to find that bit. 100 kilowatts Just, or higher yeah. of battery using a suitable charger. Oh, so 100 okay. kilowatts or higher. I don't know how high. I would bet you it's 150. But then, it, if yeah, it's, it's probably 150. Yeah. So um, that car, I'm going to, I'm going to be in it in the next. I two, know. two weeks, three weeks. I'm very, very much looking forward to that. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, not often. I'm jealous when you go in and in a uh, when you do one one of your special car things. Actually, special, no, I'm always special jealous. car things. <laughs> when special car, but I'm quite <laughs> jealous of that because I mean it, because it's sort of you know it's got all the 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 easy criticisms of all the kind of elitist oh, electric cars are only for wealthy people all those things are all verified to the max by this particular car. They are. They are. But. But it's still great. I still love it. It's still good. Well, it's 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 Britain taking it to the Germans with uh, with the Porsche, and I hope that it'll encourage people like Rolls Royce to um, crack on with EV, yeah, um, and, yeah. And, and Bentley maybe as well. But um, the, and there's an, there's another British brand who have just pulled the, the drapes off a, a, yeah. an electric. Yeah, that thing. is. I like that. Yeah, the Lotus. The Lotus. So yeah. Lotus haven't made a new car in about 175 years, <laughs> and um, and suddenly now now they're owned by um, they're owned by Geely Geely. Yeah. Um, suddenly they've gone. We need to make a new car, chaps. So they've they've brought out two. Um, right. One of them is the Avora GT4, which has got a petrol engine, so you don't want to worry about that. Right. But they've got a Type 130 hypercar. Ooh. Ooh. What does that mean, you say? What does it mean? <laughs> uh, what it what it means is, um, well, they haven't told us a great deal. I think it's going to be about a thousand horsepower. Uh, it's going to be a similar length to the existing Avora, which is uh, four point four meters long. Right, um, and it will sit close to the ground. It will be about two meters wide. But 
if it's similar to the way it drives the Avora, the Avora is probably out of all the cars I've ever driven, it's probably got the best steering. Right. It's incredible. So yeah, the total system output is tipped to exceed a thousand horsepower, and it's set to offer a range of more than two hundred and fifty miles. Wow, and that is impressive. And they won't restrict. I mean, if people buy them, they'd make more than one hundred and fifty. I'm assuming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's absolutely right. Um, they, yeah. they, the powertrain has been developed with Williams Advanced Engineering, so we right. know they've 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 been they've done they've done their time with Formula E and uh, yeah they've and learned a lot doing Formula E yeah yeah the battery pack and the the push rod rear suspension will be visible under a transparent cover oh so we're going to have a bit of I think we're going to get covers. some racing pedigree electric sex with yeah. this car you know <laughs> I'm hoping got lots of downforce yeah. and lots of underbody diffusing and movable wing elements and drag reducing oh. DRS systems <laughs> and uh, well, Huge aero tunnel development, incorporating Ooh, yes. lighting elements. Oh, it's just going to... One thing that Lotus is really good at is bare, ba- bare basics, exhilarating yeah. driving experience. If you've yeah. never driven... Even if you don't like the way Lotus is drive, which I'm a bit... Some of them are a bit divisive for me. When right. you get in one, the connectivity between you and the car, the communication between the steering and everything is just like no other. Yeah, and that's yeah. why companies have always bought Lotus because what they do is they buy Lotus and they strip it of all of its um, expertise in suspension and steering <laughs> and handling, and then they throw it away five years later. But hopefully, um, Chinese company Geely won't do that. Yes, it'll yeah. nu- nurture it. I'm <laughs> looking for it's got scissor doors and everything, Robert. This could be oh. this could be on your list for next cars. That you must own. You must own. Yes, yeah. I don't know my my constantly updated list. Well, quite exactly. <laughs> you, you you just don't know where to turn anymore. None of us do. <laughs> There's too much too, being unveiled. There's too much. Yeah, way too much. Um, and so that's. Uh, I'm just looking. Oh, that's the Taycan. Take. I can't say it. Taycan. Well, it's it's. They say. Sorry, it's I've just Taycan, found pictures of that. You, you can say it however you want. I just. I just say taken. But yeah. I, I still think it, let's should we start calling it the Missione again? Well, I quite like just the Missione. I thought that was good. Yeah, just call it the Missione. Yeah. The um oh the oh, just yes. having a sip of my water now, but mine's now, within ah, reach. Now here's a, a question then. So at because you, you I'm I'm now scrolling madly through trying to find other cars that were, that are in Shanghai, but. You, you, I'm just wondering whether Ford didn't unveil their Mustang-inspired electric. Uh, not that I s- no, not that I've seen so far. But some stuff might come out, uh, like well, after this, after this podcast goes out. Right. Um, there's there's a lot of domestic market only models. Um, for, right. For yeah, there will be, won't they? Yeah. One of them that, and I don't know if this is going to come to the UK or Europe. I I would love it. Have you seen it? The Aura R1. Oh, no. What's that? Ooh, it's a £7,000 electric car, which looks like more of a hat tip to the Honda um, prototype, e oh. prototype. Wait a minute. So when you say £7,000, you mean as in pounds money? Pounds U- UK, money. UK old-fashioned money. Yes, uh, sterling. Pounds sterling. Pounds sterling. It's, what's it's, it? Sorry, tell me what it's called. Go on, have it's a quick called an, gander. an Aura R1. O-R-A. R one, yeah. and it looks oh, like yeah. um, oh. it looks like the Honda Pro- e prototypes had a saucy night with a smart. Oh my four god, four. I love that little thing! Isn't it great? Yeah, yeah. I would say Honda are quite angry about that, but yeah. but it's it's one of the world's cheapest EVs. Price starts from less than seven grand once the Chinese oh, government well, subsidies is... are taken into account. Wow! And they're saying it will travel up to two hundred miles on a single charge, but mm, right, who can say? But yeah, wow. there it is, the Aura R1. It's just been unveiled at the um, the Shanghai show. Wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, that's good. That's amazing. I love that. I mean, that's, that is the sort of thing, it's basically what we were talking about earlier on. It's really, really simple, yeah. Yeah. cheap, you know, not, it's not, no one's going to go, oh my God, you drive the Aura R1, you must be a yeah. sex god. Well, <laughs> Well, who knows? I mean, it depends. Yeah, maybe they will. Yeah, who knows? sensible people I've, would. I've, I've genuinely never met a woman who is attracted to people that drive flash cars. Actually, no. I mean, that is, then, I think, one of me. the peculiar things of that. I've only ever heard men say, "Oh, I'd be so embarrassed getting out of that," or, yeah. "I want a car that makes me look good." 
And I yeah. just go, no, none of them make you look good naked, <laughs> sure. None of them make you look good because no. you've got Doesn't your breakfast what down your shirt and you're wearing terrible and you're loafers. Wearing, you're wearing cargo pants and slip-on. What are those? Slide-ons. Slide-ons Sliders. with yellow socks. Sliders. You look like a swimming pool attendant. Yeah. Is yeah. And out of condition, swimming pool attendant. But you've just got out of a very expensive Maserati. <laughs> In an Italian marketplace, and you think you look like a sex god, and exactly. all the women that are looking at you are going, "Oh, look at that poor fella! Look, he hasn't got a clue. He hasn't got any idea. Does he realise no. he's got a load of old olives down his front?" Yeah, yeah. I don't know whether because I'm trying to think uh, it, that, like if I was just yeah, I'm going to do that. I'm going to fantasise. I'm sitting in a beautiful Italian marketplace, and uh, you know, having a coffee in the morning and reading the uh, something, a book, a novel, a reading a novel. I'm no, reading that- an Ian McEwan novel. And a, a sort of Maserati, a sporty Italian sexy car pull, comes down and, and goes over the cobbles slowly, but with the engine rumbling. It's growling over the cobbles. And, yeah, and it stops on the other side of the road and there's some kids on mopeds and it goes, Vroom! and it stops. And then the door opens and a really stunningly beautiful woman gets out. Now, do I think she is really cool because of the car? Or do I think, oh my God, she's just a beautiful Italian woman um, and she she will think that I'm dead. Uh, it's hard to say because if said I, I woman, I don't think the car would make any difference. If she just walked down the road, I would still go. Oh my God, she's rather beautiful, and I'm far too old to be interested yeah. in such things. I, I I'd like to see that, obviously. But if she got out yeah. of a smart four two with scratches all over it, I'd be equally I, yeah. as um, exactly. Yeah, intrigued. that's the thing. It wouldn't make any difference. No. Yeah, she got out of the rub- most rubbish knackered old car. A Fiat Panda with the back yeah. end with the with the back okay. end smashed in. The back end smashed in, and a, and a box of chickens in the back, you know, so you know, like a, a, a cage with a load of chickens in. Yeah. And she's wearing, and she's wearing old galoshes and a torn frock and a, a funny hat. You know, it doesn't make any bloody difference, does it? But yeah. if a really unpleasant, you know, one doesn't like to judge people on their looks, but say a woman who who does not trade on her looks, quite uh, was to get out of a very flash car, I wouldn't then go, oh my god, she's stunning because of the car. I'd still think, oh dear. I'd think, I wonder what she's like at conversation. That's what I would great. think, Robert. I'd think, great face for radio. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we're here right now. Yeah. This is a good idea. I, I have to say, I'm, I'm looking... I, I've put a lot of effort into where I look today. It's just nobody it, knows. I'm impressed. You look nobody fabulous, knows. Johnny. No, I've shaved. I've yeah. moisturised. Well, I don't know. The bleaching your hair was a bit of a... I would say a bit of a stretch, but I think it looks good. Don't, I don't I like get to used talk to it. about it. I've sculpted my my face furniture into some kind of Fu Manchu outfit. <laughs> yeah, but no, I am impressed with the Aura R One. Aura like R One, yeah, that's that. Because no. if someone, you know, if somebody was to launch a car here, say next year, that was well sub twenty thousand pounds with a hundred and fifty to two hundred mile electric range. With hundred kilowatt charging, so it charged fast. Yeah, so like Nissan Leaf or better. Yeah, range and rapid chargeability. Yeah, the, would people but would sub twenty? There is a there is a demand because do you know Hilton Holloway? Yes, I do. Yeah, I used to work right, with him I, uh, many moons ago. Right, I thought so because he did it. He made his two points. Uh, you know uh, about this is all to do with the self charging self charging gate, uh, which I really don't want to talk about, but. Um, and he, he made a really good point was the, 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 it's very hard to make a profitable car, a profit, profitable electric car at the moment, which yeah. I think is a perfectly valid point. I think a lot of car makers are struggling with that. But he said there's no demand for them. And I said, I, I agree with the point about profitability, but I know you're wrong about the demand because I really do believe there is greater demand than supply. And that's the, that's the big holdup. Two big holdups for adoption of electric cars in the UK is la- lack of reassuring charging infrastructure that's yeah. reliable yeah. and and lack of supply. Yeah. Because so, if there were, say, a, a shipload of Konas came in, 1,000 Konas, yeah. they would all be sold in two days. Oh, yeah, they would. There's, they absolutely yeah. would. Yeah. yeah. That they were, Well, and that is the hope of a lot of um, um, brands right now who are about to wheel out... Good, good, decent range EVs yeah. that are that are going to be sub kind of twenty seven grand with with yeah. you know an enormous range, and that's that's the plan. 
That's true. But then the thing, the thing I don't know about, which I've heard, and I keep meaning to check this out. So this is a very informative podcast, listeners. Because check I, this out. <laughs> but check this out. But there is some legislation that comes in next year that will that, to do with emissions. Uh, there's a new level of emissions regulation in Greater Europe. So choose how many countries that involves. Greater which Europe. Means, which means which means that, that uh, a lot of electric car launches are being... <clears throat> that's why they always say coming in 2020, because they know they've got to have a really big list of electric cars in 2020. Now, I can't remember what that is this, legislation is. Oh, uh, right. Is this... It'll, this will be a low-carbon Yeah, it's an um, endless penalty. tightening up of, of... Yeah, exactly. So they've got to have electric cars on their books uh, that you can actually buy. I mean, that's... You know, this is the dream that this might actually come to fruition yeah. finally. yeah. That um, there will be, you know, that you go into a showroom and the guy isn't trying to sell you the diesel ones that they've got thousands of. He's trying to, they're, they're happy to sell you an electric car. You know, that's the... We can hope. I think it, yeah. it's... It's, it's, a, it's, it's it, changing. It is changing. Yeah, and I mean, and, and, and the Chinese are, are pushing it more than anything because of, because of their rate of development as a country. Yes. They've realised oh, no, the so quickly yeah. that they can't keep going like this which is why suddenly e- the ev situation has been ramped up and we've got yeah. cars called things like leap l-e-a-p yes. and like a leap year um, right which is uh, which has just come out uh, like a an electric coupe and then they've got things that are called iways there's an iways car a-i-w-a-y-s the ays u5 it's an electric wow. suv that will launch in europe next year Wow. There you go. It's six sixty five kilowatt hour battery pack with a range of three hundred and twelve on the NEDC cycle, which no, nobody uses anymore. No. Oh God, on the NEDC, yes, that's the one that on is on the Ned C. That, that yeah. is, that's the one that's within a hundred kilometres accurate. Yeah, that not massive. <laughs> hundred kilometres helpful. either way. <laughs> yeah, hundred kilometres. That's ridiculous. Yeah, imagine yeah. if that was. That's... Imagine if you use the NEDC for um, a breathalyzer test. Yeah. <laughs> or even a sat nav. Yeah, oh, I've got to get to right to the middle of Paris. Well, we've got you to France. Isn't that good enough? <laughs> yeah. well, well, it's actually Belgium. It's near that France. would be great. It'd be, we've got you within 12 miles. Is that okay? Yeah. We don't have any idea beyond here where, you're, where that house you're looking for is. Somewhere around there. Somewhere. But um, then, oh, God. The yeah. Xpeng P7, another name which you wow. would have never heard of, the Xpeng. So these are all Chinese companies. Fledgling EV brands. Xpeng yeah. is chasing the Tesla Model 3 with its P7 compact saloon. Wow. 311-mile NEDC um, vehicle with pop-out door handles, a similar oh. to pop-out all, that Tesla, handles. and frameless doors, so very, very Tesla-ish. Yeah. Um, and they, and are these uh, are these all on display at, uh, at Shanghai? These are all at Shanghai. Yeah, right. these are all at Shanghai. The Way VV5, Way as in W E Y. Right. Um, yeah, the Great Wall Way. Oh, the um, Great Wall. I've heard of Great yeah, Wall. Yeah, Great motors. Wall. Uh, they're pretty, a, and they are actually a huge company. Great Wall great, is a massive. Uh, they're not like a little startup. Oh no, Great Wall are massive, and Way yeah. is their. I think is their premium brand. Right, uh, and they've got a. They've just they've just shown this 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 VV5, which is a electric only um, wow. SUV. So yeah, it's it's coming to Europe as well in 2020. Right. There's loads. Wow. There's loads and loads and loads. The uh, uh, what is it? The um, the Neo. The Neo. You know, oh. Do you remember the Nurburgring break, record break in EP9? Oh, yes. The, one, the ludicrously fast one. Ludicrous, yeah. ludicrous. Well, that company, NEO, um, has uh, is, is only released SUVs to date, but apparently that will change in 2021 with the ET Saloon, which again oh. was released. And it looks a bit Tesla Model 3-ish. Wow. Surprise, yeah. surprise. Um, yeah, it's, um, it's looking pretty good. 220 right. kilowatt. Um, dual motor setup with more than 300 miles of range. Right. right, right. I could go on, Robert. The Grove Granite, no. a name which wow. simply nobody knows about, I don't think. <laughs> it's, Grove is a company, a new company, which made its debut at the Shanghai show, aiming to become the world's first hydrogen fuel cell only car manufacturer. Right. Its wow. first model, the Granite. I don't. I've. There, I think Dodge made a. Concept car called the Granite, 
Right. It, it rings true. Um, it was styled by Pininfarina, and its oh. Obsidian SUV will expand the range in 2020. Grove claims its cars will manage upwards of 600 miles of range, aided by regen braking. It has global ambitions too, having secured an agreement to expand to Australia and New Zealand, but it's too early to talk about a European launch. Uh, I've, I've been getting this particular information from Autocar. Um, right. And also car magazines. So thank you to those two people for being reliable, good sources of yeah. um, of news. Right. Well, that is because that was the other thing that I wanted to talk about, which was, and while you've been talking that, I've been looking for the course. I can't find the link. You've been asleep, uh, which is what well, I, yeah, you know, I don't blame map. you at all. <laughs> no, no, no. It's brilliant, minutes. though. No, I'm very, I'm really impressed with that list. The, we'll put links to all these things. We can put a link to that story so people can see if they want to. You can see the, pictures the, and everything. It's got pictures of all these amazing Chinese cars. But the the article I read was about... So, uh, uh, yes, that's right. Well, I'm, I'm getting it the right round. So, intense lobbying from Toyota in China to the Chinese government. Okay. And this is in the wake of their... So, their... Uh, incentives to, for people to buy electric cars are being diminished like they are all around the world you know so that a few years ago that you would get a reduction basically and it was generally purchase tax some sort of purchase tax yeah. that you wouldn't have to pay on an electric car and you had to pay extra on certainly which is what's damaged Range Rover on importing something like a diesel or a petrol Range Rover the tax went yeah. up on those vehicles because they were imported and they're da 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 and they're dirty and, apparently and they're dirty yeah, yeah. and um I don't have to say, apparently. <laughs> Actually, I followed a Range Rover back home this morning, and that one was dirty. I'm not going to say all Range Rovers like that, but this one clearly had some major problems because it was like a World War One battleship making smoke to hide from the enemy. I mean, it was it was not running well. Which well, is usually see- a lot of short journeys, you know, clogging the old DPF. Yeah. Yeah, and then you get onto the motorway and you kick it down and give and it kick it down. Proper this is massive. Cl- it was choking clouds of black smoke. I actually had to pull back just so I could see where I was going. I mean, it was you know that sometimes you see a bit of smoke come out. This was not that. This was chugging. Yeah, this was de- really bad. I mean, it looked like it was about to fall to bits. But no. So what they're saying, what is happening, is that they're re- the Chinese government are really pushing for hydrogen fuel cells oh, and for right. HFC cars. It's mainly in commercial uh, commercial vehicles, which makes so much sense, um, you know. So it's trucks and buses and stuff like that. But it's to, and they, it's not that they don't want to do battery ones; they want to have a balance. So they're focusing their support, their government support on on developing HFCs, on developing the hydrogen refueling infrastructure. And you know, and I think someone sent me this in 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 the sense that I would get, I'd have a rant about <laughs> about. Oh, okay. I do feel so. I absolutely the opposite. I mean, I think it's brilliant because it's basically it's not fossil fuels. Well, no, it's clean emissions. Yeah, it's yeah. really yeah. I mean, I'm really you know, and, and and the only problem I've ever had with hydrogen fuel cell cars, which is only at the moment, is the expense because people go, oh, electric cars are too expensive. I'm going to wait for hydrogen. You can buy a hydrogen fuel cell car now, except you won't be able to unless you sell your house because they are mind-numbingly expensive. They are, they are. Um, and you know, and I mean that. But they will get cheaper, of course they will, and the and the infrastructure will develop. And you know, it, it, there, there's disadvantages and advantages. Yes, you get 600, 700 miles range, but you've got to go to a hydrogen fueling station in the morning when you wake up and you haven't filled it, because whereas with an electric car it's full. You know, all those yeah. things. Yeah. Are sort yeah. of other arguments, but and still, I, we've talked about heavy goods vehicles probably being the best candidate. It's for such a hydrogen. such a brilliant idea, yeah, because they can and package the, the 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 tanks and yeah. Uh, I mean that Nic- the Nicola the Nicola one uh, hydrogen fuel cell truck in the states is is it just feels more plausible than a, a battery truck, you know. And we're talking a big rig. I mean, this is a massive truck. Yeah, a you know, semi, really as huge. They call them. A semi. I don't feel comfortable calling them that, but I. I know you've had you've had lorry. trouble with that. I can still. I've spent enough time in America to deal. I can now say semi without then just giggling a bit afterwards. <laughs> I'm still at the giggling phase, obviously. <laughs> I've just. But what about if you live in a semi-detached house? Well, if you uh, there was a song by um, James Blunt referring to a semi by the sea, if you remember, and I always used to always used to think about that that lyrics. Uh, think, oh, well, 
We've all been there. Actually, uh, I got a lovely tweet from a man who was listening to our last podcast as he was driving, and we might we might have been the cause of a fatality because he he was laughing so uncontrollably at Tuck Trucker's Tizer. <laughs> <laughs> he nearly lost lost control of his vehicle. I love that. It's true though. It's true. You see all the oh, debris no. at the side of the road. You've got it's, you know you've got bits of sidewall of exploded tires, and you've got. Yeah. I I pulled up at a junction yesterday, and there was a jumper in the middle of a roundabout, <laughs> and you're like. How would you get a jumper there? in the middle of a runabout? You saw a cyclist that just took it off yeah. and got bored. What? Who drives around with their tailgate fully open, just, I don't know, just jettisoning <laughs> luggage? What? How do these things happen? Yeah, There's a I trainer. Know, There's always a trainer in the central reservation. There's always one trainer. One trainer, not both, just one. Yeah, no, it's never both. Never both. <laughs> but truckers' ties is a thing, sadly. It's yeah. large no, it's, Oh, no, I'm of, absolutely with you. I do, it definitely exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to just do this story because I just think it's... I just like it because it's contentious. But I want to start with, in the same way as I'm not opposed to hydrogen fuel cell vehicles, although I've been accused of that many times. Um, I'm not opposed to nuclear power. Dun, dun, dun. Oh, my gosh, aren't you? <laughs> well... Theoretically. In, the, in, terms of, in terms of, you know, a nuclear power station that is generating lots of electricity and no CO2 and no other emissions yes. while it's generating and it's working properly, you know, is the, the, the intrinsic ideology behind that is good. I don't think that's bad. The, you know, this, the, the list of downsides is obvious, but that is good. The, the long-term storage of nuclear waste is always, and it's never been resolved, is a massive yeah. unresolved problem. And France have got, because France has got the most nuclear power stations of anyone, have got huge problems where they're going to store it. All their underground storage facilities are already full and yeah. they've got gazillions of tons of really dangerous material and they don't know where to, where to put it it is a problem but, isn't it? yeah so edf big french energy company very uh, amazing uh, doing a lot of very forward thinking electric vehicle oriented renewables they're doing a lot of that but they are building flamanville which is in on the french coast on the Brittany coast in fact quite near england so not far from us <laughs> they they built most of their nuclear power stations <laughs> on the coast that faces and, England. Uh, I don't know what that says about Anglo-French relations. Do they have a large blunderbuss which which just funnels out any kind of emissions, any kind yeah, of dirty? Sends it all over us. Yeah. Where shall we put all the, uh, the the more dangerous nuclear power stations? How about along the coast near England? Huh? How do you like that roast beef? <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, <coughs> the thing about this particular power station that's important is it's exactly the same design as Hinkley Point C being built by exactly the same people with exactly the same materials and the same funding so it's Chinese French co-production and the Flamanville one is a little bit over budget oh, cool. um, I mean it's billions over budget and it's <laughs> it was meant to start in it was meant to start generating power when they first started building it in 2012 and it's now uh it's the, the there's now a safety it's had a safety com, uh, uh, inspection and uh they're not going to say what the extra costs are but the uh, the nuclear safety authority has come up with lots and lots of problems and it, so it's meant to open in 2012 it's now <laughs> it was now meant to open in 2022 so only 10 years late 10 years late 10 years 10 years late and it's gonna it looks like uh the the decision for uh, the, uh, for them to resolve all these problems uh could push back the reactors planned launch until after 2022 so um it, according to asn world faults world faults you know if you're in a car and it's got a world fault it's either embarrassing or it could even be dangerous to you as a driver it's, or passenger it, in that car. It's a fairly dangerous sounding statement. It doesn't sound good, but a world fault in a nuclear power station is a major obstacle to the exclusion of any rupture. My goodness. You, you want to so exclude, you definitely want to, excuse me, if you excluded all your ruptures in your, in your power station. It's just, I mean, a ru yeah. How many, how, 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 how many pounds, how many pounds or euros is this cost? so far oh 
I can't find it Are in we this talking, particular story. Are we talking story. Oh, it's, tens it's of like, billions or something? It's tens of billions over its original multi, multi-billion uh, euro budget. So now, I, I mean, there's two, there's, because there's two power stations that are, being, that are already under construction that are exactly the same design, and I can't remember which one it is, what the design is. Pressurised well, uh, pressurized reactor. It seems to me, based upon that, and I'm no, <clears throat> I'm no industry professional on this, but it seems to me that, that that signals that nobody can accurately quote to build yeah. a, new, a modern nuclear power station. So on the basis of the fact you can't really accurately quote, you shouldn't do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. do, do you not think? Because at least... Well, it is that thing. No, well, it is like house extensions or house renewals and you get a quote from your builder. Yeah. And, and he goes, I'll do it in six months and it'll cost, you know, 250,000 quid. And you go, oh, okay, well, it's going to blow me. Okay, we'll, we'll manage that. And then he comes back after two months and said, it's going to take two years and cost you a million, which is, well, this is that's the kind of difference. It, that that is, is the difference. You're going to go, yeah. you're having a laugh. This is unreasonable. You take the guy to court or the, or the female yeah. builder, if, if they're female. Um, I, I'm, I'm a bit offended. Yeah, it is. It's I really difficult. I, isn't I'd it? rather just put a, dozens of tidal and offshore yeah. and all many other sources to work. You know, yeah. that's what that's what's quite depressing about it. It is. It's just. It, I mean, there, there, there's loads and loads of stories. I mean, I'll post a link to this one, but it's there's loads of stories about that because the other one is in. I always say I've have said Norway in the past, and I've been brutally and angrily corrected by Norwegians because it isn't in Norway; it's in Finland. But there's another one that's exactly the same design, and that is further, de- even further delayed, and even more over budget. But I now can't remember what that one's called. So that is definitely it's a, called a, a, failure, Robert. It's called it's, it's called, called failure. It's sure as hell not called the urban dream chaser. I can tell you that. <laughs> The coastal oh, failure. The coastal but, failure. Yeah, is that thing of... It's also that notion that what we're see, witnessing in the energy market really rapidly developing is is widely distributed and much wider owned. I mean, that's the thing. The one in... You know, that the, the local people can own effectively a power plant. I'm going to a village in Swindon in a few weeks where they've got a huge amount of solar in uh, uh, both on their like school building the village hall in fields around them that the community own and that is generating revenue actual actual revenue that the the uh, the community is actually benefiting from it has enormous wow. support in the in the local community and that is such a different model and it, it, it doesn't require the same because the, the the besides of you know a expensive nuclear power station that is easy to forget is the connections so the substations the the high voltage pylons that have got to be put in that cost billions yeah i mean that is a huge cost it does to yeah. do that because you've got one centralized massive generation it's actually only i don't want to say how many but it's something like three gigawatts okay it's 24 hours a day winter summer all those things but it's not like I want it to be, if, if for that much money, 300 gigawatts so that it generates more electricity than the whole country uses. You you're know, right, that's right. kind of In fact, it, the only thing that really tarnishes the view from my house um, to, to, to oh, the, the it, vista that I'm overlooking right, right now, um, hunched over my microphone, um, is uh, a string of pylons. Yeah. Yeah. And, and although some pylons, European pylons, are interesting because they look a They've bit got, like yeah, space they have different invaders, designs. Don't they? Yeah. But our yeah. ones don't. No, and they're everywhere. They're they're, they're really ubiquitous, aren't they? Yeah. People, but we've got used to them. We don't notice them. But then if you see a wind turbine, everybody goes. They don't actually. Not everybody. Some people get a bit moody about them. They do, don't but they? Yeah. But nobody ever says, "Oh, I don't particularly like a pylon." Yeah. But and yeah. then also the thing about birds. I I grew up in Oxfordshire, where there was a big uh, string of pylons near the home, similar to yours, near where I grew up. Uh, coming from Didcot Power Station. So huge, mm. really big, major, major voltage p- things. And I used to walk under there with the family dog in the morning and you'd see a dead swan or a dead duck. Always, it was a really common sight underneath the power line. So really? they've been flying through that. Yeah, they kill thousands of birds. Well, there's wires that are really thin yeah. that they don't see and they hit that when they're flying along, especially a big bird like a swan. You know, and people go on about wind turbines killing birds. They do. There's no question. Wind turbines occasionally kill birds, but definitely much less than power lines. Cats. Yeah. Cats are the biggest killers of birds in this country. Uh, yeah. Glass-fronted buildings. I didn't know that. I've yeah. spoken to someone in London who's, who were terrified because uh, it was actually a seagull flew into the window, definitely died. 
but it was they thought it was a bullet they thought it was a gun because it hit the window so hard because it couldn't see it. it was it was glazed with and it looked like sky yeah you know yeah the reflection yeah. of the sky on it so it didn't see it that's really common a lot of dead birds at the bottom of big buildings which is you know a travesty of, of human folly yeah, but, but it's, it's just because to put it's the less, wind turbines because it's less in, reported. In it's, yeah. it's selective journalism in a way, isn't it? When yeah, um, a All wind a is. wind farm is blamed for uh, increased deaths of birds, yeah, versus existing issues like pylons, yeah. uh, like glass. Because no, I talked, I, I talked to someone clever. Oh, a Scottish power. It wasn't I was me. Scottish power. Yeah, it's going to say definitely was, and it definitely wasn't me into the mirror. Yes. <laughs> 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 but it was um, none of us. Uh, that, though, but right? I said because I'd been on a nuclear submarine when I, uh, you know, for a TV show years ago. I, I loved it; it was brilliant and very nice lunch. We all <laughs> live in a nuclear submarine. submarine. It was a nuclear hunter killer. Oh, and when I went down from the, you know, like the conning tower, like the bit that sticks up that Sean Connery stands on in uh, Hunt for Red October. Yes, yes. Um, I went down the ladder. So it was so exciting to go on it. So it was in a harbour. I wasn't out at sea or anything. And uh, and they, they, the man in the uniform with it, who actually had a gun, and he told me that when I got down, I was to turn to my right and, and someone would meet me. So I went down the ladder. <laughs> and in that time, I forgot which was left and right. <laughs> so when I got to the bottom, I turned to my left. I mean, I was turning round to face <laughs> the captain who was greeting me at the bottom, which is all very civilised. But when I turned around, a bloke opened a door and went, oh, Robert, I love Red Dwarf. <laughs> And and what he was doing was opening the door into the engine room, which is the most top secret thing that you can possibly have in the world. And oh. I wasn't meant to see it. I could be tortured by ISIS for a year, and I wouldn't be able. To, I saw some white pipes, you know. I didn't see anything. <laughs> but anyway, so that was quite. I really blew I've it. I've seen some but, white pipes. Yeah. But what that is is a nuclear. Uh, it's a, a small nuclear power station, it is, effectively, because that submarine can stand under water for six months with a full crew of over a hundred guys. It produces light, it cleans the water, it cleans the air, it does all that stuff. Massive amount of energy. That is amazing. So why can't we have those? And I said to this guy about that at Scottish Power, and I said, why, you know, the, why don't we just bury one of those in a big container outside the new housing development? It will, it will run for 30 years. You don't have to do anything to it. It's generating gazillions of kilowatt hours of electricity. And he said, have you ever looked at a military... Uh, you know, like a Ministry of Defence budget. And I said, well, no, obviously not. He said, no, nor has anyone. <laughs> no one knows how much that costs, but believe me, it costs a staggering amount of money. <laughs> oh, my goodness. To, to build that. I mean, it would be many billions, you know, so... Um, I love the idea but, you know, of burying a submarine just outside, yeah. you know, in inland. That is, well, why not that? You know, when it's being decommissioned, well, just decommission the front bit with all the missiles in, leave us the engine room. <laughs> And we'll bury that and we'll run it because it's generating electricity. Yeah. That's what drives a submarine. Submarines don't have diesel engines now. They've only got electric motors. That's yeah. what drives them along. Yeah. And that, you just think that would make sense. But it's clearly, uh, I mean, there are companies that are investigating the possibility of, of I don't know what they call them, micro nuclear power stations. So you would literally be a container you bury in the ground and it has a little manhole cover and you go in there once every six months to check that it's all right. But it's a completely self contained. Yeah, it doesn't need refuel because it's not a great big uh, high pressure reactor thing. I have no idea what I'm talking about, other no, than I, the but, fact. No, but that the idea of them, it's like micro breweries. They they become fashionable. Yeah, will will <laughs> will will micro nuclear <laughs> generators become? The, Can we equate the economics and the environmental impact of micro breweries? Uh, with micro nuclear power stations, I think, I think it's. A, I'd like it's to see inevitable. a paper, a study on that. It's I'd inevitable. Like study. It's yeah. inevitable. <laughs> it's going to be great. Love it. Oh, oh but now, I w- my I'm last question the, is. Yeah, no, last question. I'm just I know checking we've been the time. talking done, for frigging ages, haven't we? Yeah. My last question is. Oh, I'm researching timber framed houses. Oh. Now, I wanted to know: is that do we regard that as one of the most eco responsible friendly yeah. um ways to 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 build a um a durable house these I days i think i think it's viewed generally positively and i'm sure we're going to get comments to explain well, why I, that I, might not be the case. I, I welcome but, comments on this one i really yeah. do yeah but the uh, but the the notion being that uh if you use 
you know, I mean, what's the alternative? Have clay bricks or build uh, blocks, yeah. cinder blocks, or you know, there are because there's some stuff being developed now, like for instance, carbon capture and storage, which is a very disputable and questionable technology. But one of the things you can do with that is you can encase that carbon in a in building materials. Right. Okay. So you could almost is that an, a, how that's done? I don't know, but that you know, it, it's it's basically a carbon building block. Uh, and I've, uh, you know, that has been tried out. And I think they have been produced, but I don't know how economically viable they are. But the idea, with, if you use timber, obviously you can grow more trees. Right. Um, okay. Yeah. So it's it's absolutely dependent on the source of the timber and how it's done. And there are, I mean, there's, I think there's plenty of good arguments about the destruction of the wild, the wild environment. So yeah. people like George Monbiot rightly are kind of kicking off, kicking off about that we've. Make, turn the entire world into an agricultural landscape even if it's we're growing trees so some of the big forests yeah. have all been planted to produce wood you know so uh, from a kind of co2 environmental out, uh, impact uh, uh, thing it might be better but from a natural world impact so if you've got 70 million acres of identical trees planted in rows which exists certainly in um, along that scandinavia or scandinavia you know, a huge amount of it and they're producing millions of tons of wood but there's like three bird um, species that can live there uh, as opposed to the, what would have been in the natural forest 5,000 bird Hundreds, species. So, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, I think it's a really difficult... Because, I mean, my house is wood and it's, you know, it's, it's, I mean, it's really easy if you want to do an alteration. Because when we moved the wall to put the fridge in, I just got a saw out. <laughs> <laughs> sawed the wall away you put you put the sledgehammer outside. down you got your saw out but, yeah, yeah. there's no bricks or mortar or dust just a bloody bit of wood you know it's not that hard yeah i mean uh, to just to explain to viewers a proper builder came in and actually built the wall i didn't do that <laughs> put a new wall up but that was he did that in like 40 minutes there was a wall there you know because it was just four bits of wood and a bit of plasterboard brilliant so you know, from that point of view, from the point of view of the home, really easy to have, really well insulated. Yeah, it's, dur it's durable. I mean, it, like, you know, our house is uh, older than me, uh, so it's quite old. You know, so it lasts longer than a human being. Yeah, yeah. And our wooden, I mean, even shingle roof. You know, that is uh, Canadian cedar. Our roof is from Canada. Is it? Yeah, C cedar shingles from Canada, and they they the ones on the back are coming up for forty years old. Wow. We've never replaced them. The ones on the front we had to replace when we changed the building, but that's brilliant. And they're fine. They've never. They, we've never had a leaky roof. We've, everything else has leaked, <laughs> including me. But, but not, not the roof. But not the roof. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. You see, I know. Yeah. It's, I know it's commonplace in Scotland now, Northern Scotland, certainly yeah. for um, new builds, a predominantly yeah. timber frame. Well, build. in fact, but even uh, down here, there's a big housing development just down the road from us. No solar panels, no ground source heating, you know. Uh, you know like usual stuff. bobbins, yeah. Usual bobbins. But the, all the houses are timber framed. They skin them with stone. Yeah. But the actual frame structure of the house is timber. I mean, it's the most common building So material. less concrete, less cement. Yeah, so yeah. certainly less concrete. I mean, and, and if you clad it in timber, which are like ours is, then you don't build a stone external wall. Yeah. Then very, I mean, you've got still got concrete in your foundations and all that stuff, so there's still an impact from yeah. that. But but it's lessening. The, it's the lessening, amount. and I mean, yeah. it also, you know, there are there's great alternatives. I mean, there's amazing uh, new uh, architects. There's a guy I'm meeting soon, actually. I'll put you in touch with him, Johnny, who's done, who won a prize, and I don't know where the house is, but we, we we've, I've been told we can go and see it. He won a prize for the most eco house in the world. You know, it's the lowest impact least you know whatever all the materials Impactful. used it, it's it, yeah and its energy use is it, from the grid is effectively zero wow you know so it's connected to the grid but it, it produces all its own energy and heat you know if you're building from scratch that's the thing i mean things like like me and this house putting in ground source heating yeah. i'd have to rip the house to pieces i'd have to have you know it's just a nightmare but if you're building from scratch you just drill a hole under where you're going to put the house put mm. a pipe down it. exactly you've exactly. got heating for the rest of the time you're alive yeah are phenomenally low cost yeah you know uh, and, that's and, what that, you and the, the increase in the construction is really minimal yeah it maybe adds 10 percent to your total construction budget so that's what granted i mean that's my gripe now because i having spoken to a guy in australia who does these sort of houses 
and he he said do you know Ke- Kevin McLeod and I said well I've met him a few times he's a very nice guy and he said I hate that show <laughs> I said why you know he sort of came out of the blue because he's a really kind of nice bloke and he said because he never does anything about the carbon impact of the building oh, the of concrete, the, the polished uh, concrete and the concrete and the and the, but also the energy use once it's built. There are always massive houses built by wealthy people who've got a million quid to invest in a huge, you know, it might be architecturally stunning. Yeah. But they don't, and I, and I kind of argue, I said, I'm sure he has, because he did do... Uh, uh, he's done some budget uh, builds over the he's years. He's done some budget Maybe builds, amazing one in the woods. No. Yeah, but it, it is generally big, great big steel... Frame. There's not a lot of people in tie dye built making walls out no. of old car tires filled with mud anymore. No, which I there used was to a enjoy. Guy, there, well, actually, the most recent I watched, which I don't think is a very new one, I thought it was, it was on catch up, was, was a lovely guy that just spent. He just liked building. So you know, when do you think it'll be finished? Oh soon and it was like it was filmed over like 15 years <laughs> and in the time they were doing it he had young toddlers when they first went there and Kevin McLeod had a full head of dark hair by the last one the the kids had grown up had children moved out gone he was, yeah he was still building it was he <laughs> but it was a stunning stunning building I mean that was big but it was timber and it was all recycled timber that he found uh you know it was it was and every bit of it was kind of found objects and repurposed and beautiful brilliant place yeah. it's a labour so, of love yeah they do it's do it's a that. live so project that guy was, yeah Kev's cool I'm not going to diss Kev no, no I've got time I've got time for the McLeod <laughs> yeah for sure he, and he likes he likes electric cars so he, he does no wrong in my book there you go yeah there you go. I could see him in a a Fisker Karma I could see him in a Fisker Karma I, I can see him in a Rivian pickup oh Ooh. Oh, you'll see one on Grand Designs in the next two years, won't and you? If I what, if I turn on Grand Designs one night, bit depressed, winter, <laughs> and there's Kevin standing and he going, I've come over here to see this beautiful building that this beautiful young couple are making, and then he walks away and it's a Rivian. I will twist up myself in envy and bitterness. You'll and spit resentment. at this flat screen telly, won't you? I will, and then have to wipe it off because it's your own <laughs> telly. Just for a second, and, it will have seemed worth it. Yeah. And my Mrs. Judy will say, it's not about you or the car, it's about the house, so just get over it. Yeah. Yeah, but he's got a Rivian! <laughs> you might have one by then, who knows? Yeah, well, I do. Never say never. Okay. But we've got to say goodbye, because we've been going on. I'll tell you what I've just realised, Johnny, that we, before we started this, ladies and gentlemen, we were going to talk about... <laughs> you fully said charged, you fully charged live at the top of the show. You said we're going to talk done, about it at the beginning of the podcast, and we have gone on like a couple of old, like people in care homes, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> with no particular agenda. I'm waiting for my minestrone soup. Oh and yeah, a bun on a tray. Oh, a soup and a roll. Oh, soup and a roll would be just the thing. Um, but we just wanted to quickly men- we'll men- we're going to mention it a lot more because it's it's it, it's basically getting exciting, Johnny. This is the thing. Yeah. Okay. I'll, I'll do a, a brief history. So we we we're go- we we're always going to do fully charged live in June, and then there was a period of time. I think it's fair to say where a lot of businesses in the UK were a little reticent to commit to anything because of various uh, political Brexit. So, yes, yeah, so, <laughs> socio political upheavals. But the fact that that's been delayed. <coughs> until October has, has it's, it's been like it's like a, the gates have opened and the, you know like in a canal and suddenly it's poof, so they're all coming I mean we, it's going to be every company that you can possibly imagine that makes anything to do with cars charging domestic heating buildings all the stuff I mean it's going to be great for you Johnny it's really good stuff uh, ground source heating air source heat pumps all those people are going to be there with amazing displays of stuff as well as amazing collection of car conversions i mean that's really yeah. exciting yeah there is and a lot some of concept cars as well yeah and what is great for us it's always that way i really love that when a company that we haven't approached because we just think oh well, they uh, i'd love them to come but they won't have a have now approached us and said to say, we, Can we have there. a thing there that's yeah. praise indeed yeah praise indeed so it is when is it be, robert tell me i just it, can't remember when is it it's on the 7th 8th and 9th of june and it's going to be huge <laughs> i can't wait I'll be it's, there. I, I'm looking forward to it. You'll probably be there. I will definitely be there. Yeah. You might just All pop your head time. around the corner on the Sunday. Yeah. How's it gone? <laughs> Have you enjoyed right, it? guys? As you were then. Good afternoon. Yeah. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Good night. No, no, I'll be <laughs> there the whole drop. time. I'll be there the whole time. No, it'll be good. 
no so that's so uh, the, we'll put a link under that but it's at fullychargedshow.co.uk forward slash live I think is the web page but something if you look for fully charged live in On your website. search engine of any yeah. sort it will take you there and thank um, you everybody who's been listening to these podcasts prior to this um as you probably know already, they go out every Monday. Yeah. Uh, so we do. We've, but we do this we've level of to chat keep them going. every week. Yeah. You know, they're not always quite as long as this. This is a long one, Robert. Yeah. Unless it gets edited down. Yeah. But uh, it, it's a long one, so I apologise if people are really, really bored by yeah. this point. But I've yeah. learned. I've learned some stuff. Yeah, me too. Yeah. yeah. No, the the Chinese cars is that is very. I could talk about Chinese cars for too long because i think it's really interesting how that whole we must stop but you know how that whole focus of how that what they're doing in china is sort of a mixture of terrifying and amazing it's the rate of development yeah yeah it's huge well the, even the te i love that the tesla gigafactory 3 i now understand that gigafactory 2 is in uh, the e northeastern united states i've forgotten which state where they make the solar panels and the solar tiles and and power walls that's gigafactory 2 and Gigafactory 3 is in China. But what is amazing was they broke ground in December and it's nearly finished and it's now <sighs> April. Whoa. And it is, it is a massive building. I mean, if you were building a shed in your garden, fair enough, it's not going to take that long. But this is, this is a building that would house your entire town. <laughs> it's, that, it's, it's massive. I, want, I might so get a fast. quote from them to build a house. <laughs> they would do it, yeah. For an ordinary house, the Chinese guy would come over. Yeah, yeah. We'd like to build a house today. Six, six what? weeks. No, not today. Uh, tomorrow. We want it. No, take me today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Well, we'll just yeah, right. we'll sit in the garden then. If yeah. that's all right, and just look at it and wait. Just watch it, watch it arrive. Yeah, yeah. While you wait, Before why not? Four hundred Chinese workers would put it up in two days. Just click and collect. Easy. <laughs> but anyway, we've got to stop now. We've gone on far too long. But it's been great fun. Uh, thank you very much, Johnny. It's been a, a delight, as always. Thank you, to, Robert. Uh, to the, chew the vegan fat. Absolutely. Chewing the cud. Yes. Yeah. Chewing these, the soya cud. Soya cud. <laughs> soya cud. Uh, thank you, everybody. Um, yeah. it's, it's, it's goodbye from me. And, and it's goodbye from me, too. And if you have been, as always, thank you for listening. <laughs>